how long it has been you've been volunteering? 22 years. 22 years? How did that get started? My daughter uh, was making a confirmation and she uh, had to come down here to do community service. And she told me how much she loved it and she said, you'll love it, Mom. So I called um, Father Kelly. It was um, Columbus Day and I said, are you open because it's a holiday? He said, yes, we are. So I came down and I stayed ever since. As many people as you see and feed, you know the neighborhood. It's the tip of the iceberg in some ways, isn't it? It is. And I get a take of it on a Monday night, but especially on the holidays, we delivered some dinners um, to the elderly, and it was so sad to see them. They said, come in and have some coffee with us and Merry Christmas, and it was so sad to have to give the dinner and not be able to stay. So the social part of it is really important to that, to that particular yes. group. Yes. And even on a Monday when they come here, um, we're probably their only connection, you know, to being kind to people because they're not kind. And and we we say, you know, how are you doing? And they say, well, have a good day, and thank you for the meal, and thank you for being here. They thank us for being here but I think of the ones that are home that can't get here, and that bothers me. It's a big challenge. That bothers me. But I think people are, are getting around to that now, don't you? I think they're being more aware of it. Um, everybody's aware of soup kitchens and food pantries, but they're more aware of people that cannot get out, and how do you get the food to them? How do you get that little, hello, how are you? Um, I watched the film about Lincoln, the, the delivery guy, and the Meals on Wheels man. And he was incredible because if he doesn't see, if somebody doesn't answer that door and they're supposed to be home, then that's an alert to people. And um, that, that is very troublesome to us. Remember for me one of the best times of being a volunteer. The best time of my life being a volunteer here was there was a man named Peter that would come down and um, he would not speak to anybody he would just keep his head down um, he was a very young man in his 20s back then and his legs were uh, like crippling almost like he had polio back then but I don't know what was wrong he wouldn't speak um, I would say to him can I get you a dinner he wouldn't speak to me so after a year of him coming down, he finally gave me a dollar. And with that dollar, he said, could you give it to the church? And I said, sure. And every week he would bring me something, whether it was a penny, something he found on the ground, and I'd put him in a box. And then one week he said to me, can you get my dinner? And I said, I would love to. And I got his dinner and we sat down. And from that day on, we've had the greatest friendship ever. I think that we are onto something that the faith-based work in the community does something at one end of this spectrum that government mm -hmm. and even some of the nonprofits can't do. But I think they, would you agree, they seem to need each other's help to work Definitely, together. definitely. He, um, he is an inspiration to everybody. and. The journal had called me and said they wanted to do an article and they wanted it to run Christmas Eve day. So I said, do you want to do it on a volunteer? And they said, no, we want to do it on a guest of yours. And I said, I have the perfect person, but I don't know if he'll talk to you. And I said to him, I said, Peter, will you do this article? He said he would love to because he wanted to tell everybody what we did for him and that makes it great. Mm -hmm.